This is a low power view of a paraganglioma of the bladder. Paragangliomas are rare bladder tumours and account for approximately 0.06% of bladder tumours. Females are affected much more frequently than males with a ratio of 3 females to 1 male and the mean age at which they occur is 45. Approximately 10% of paragangliomas are malignant but in the bladder the proportion is rather higher with around 20% having malignant behaviour. Bladder paragangliomas are associated with a number of conditions including succinate dehydrogenase deficiency, neurofibromatosis type 1, von Hippel-Landau syndrome and multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2. The locations in the bladder that paragangliomas tend to arise in include the trigone, dome and lateral wall and it is thought that they arise from embryonic crests of chromaffin cells in the sympathetic plexus in the detrusor muscle of the bladder wall. Around 80% of patients with bladder paragangliomas present with symptoms including hematuria and hypertension and approximately two-thirds of patients will have hypertension. But the really interesting symptoms are those that occur during micturition or voiding and this accounts for around 50% of patients who will have symptoms such as headaches, palpitations, sweating, hypertension and blurred vision. Grossly bladder paragangliomas are dome-shaped nodules, they may be lobulated and solid and the usual size is up to around 3 centimetres. The overlying urothelium is normal and the tumours are situated within the deep muscle, i.e. intramural. On histology, the urothelium is intact and it is the deep muscle that is usually involved. The tumour is composed of epithelioid cells arranged in nests called zalbalen and the cells have abundant pink or granular cytoplasm. Between the nests of cells are vascular septi and the nests of cells are surrounded by sustentacular cells. Sustentacular cells are supporting cells and these wrap around the nests. The tumours show absence of mitotic figures, necrosis and vascular invasion. Having said that, it is not possible to predict the behaviour of a bladder paraganglioma histologically. Useful immunostains are neuroendocrine markers such as chromogranin, synaptophycin and CD56. The tumour cells show strong positive staining for these. The epithelial markers are negative. These would include CK7, CK20, A1, A3 and CAM5.2. Another stain which frequently shows positivity is the GATA3. Another stain that is particularly useful just to clinch the diagnosis is an S100. This shows positive staining of the cystintacular cells that surround Zellbalen or nests of paraganglioma cells. Here you can see the paraganglioma and this is the collection of cells with the mauve cytoplasm lying in the pink staining deep muscle. 
On higher power you can appreciate the nested appearance of the paraganglioma producing these zalbalin. And this area shows the vascular nature of the septi between the nests of paraganglioma cells. This is an example of staining with an epithelial marker in a paraganglioma. This is the AE1, AE3, and you can see that it is negative. There is no brown staining. So that is useful to distinguish it from a carcinoma. In contrast, this stain shows very strong positivity and this is the chromogranin, and that is one of the neuroendocrine markers. This is the GATA3 stain. This shows nuclear positivity. This, of course, could be confused with a transitional cell carcinoma, but the negative epithelial marker should sort that out. This is the S100 stain. You can see the rather delicate network of cells around the nests of paraganglioma cells that are staining with the S100 and these are the sustentacular cells.